with only 45 days until the election between Donald Trump and Kamala Harris, the whole world, and especially the media, is fixated on the outcome. There are countdown shows, constant updates, and endless discussions about who will take the seat of power. Yet while the world is so focused on this political moment, I want to direct your attention beyond what happens on election day. What is to come in the future beyond Trump and Harris is far more significant. There are greater spiritual realities at play, ones that will shape our world and our faith in profound ways. Throughout history and scripture, a profound truth emerges about the forces driving humanity's relentless pursuit of a one-world system. This isn't just a recent phenomenon. It's an ancient desire fueled by an invisible hand, a malevolent spirit that seeks to unite the world under a single authority apart from God. One of the earliest and most notable examples of humanity's attempt at centralized control is found in the story of the Tower of Babel, detailed in Genesis 11, verse 1 to 9. This passage tells us that all of humanity, speaking a single language, gathered in the land of Shinar, which is ancient Mesopotamia, modern-day Iraq. Their intention was to build a city and a tower that reaches to the heavens. The goal was clear. They sought to make a name for themselves and avoid being scattered across the earth. But this ambition directly opposed God's command to Noah and his descendants to fill the earth. This effort was far more than just constructing a city and a tower. It symbolized humanity's rebellion, a unified front against God, seeking to assert independence and establish a centralized authority over all people. The phrase, make a name for ourselves, reveals their desire for power, fame and self-sufficiency completely apart from God. In essence, they were saying, we don't need God, we can do this on our own. God, seeing their unified defiance, intervened. He confused their language, making it impossible for them to communicate effectively. This confusion led to their scattering across the earth, which thwarted their plan for a unified, centralized human government. This divine intervention serves as a powerful reminder that human efforts to unite under a single, godless authority will always be met with resistance from God. Yet, the spirit behind this ambition did not die with the Tower of Babel. It persisted and found new expressions throughout history. Another significant attempt at a one-world government is seen in the reign of Nebuchadnezzar, the king of Babylon, who ruled from 605 to 562 BC. Nebuchadnezzar's empire was one of the greatest in the ancient world. He is depicted in the Bible as a powerful ruler who sought to establish absolute authority over the nations he conquered. In the book of Daniel, we see Nebuchadnezzar erecting a golden statue, demanding that all people in his kingdom bow down and worship it. This act was not just about idolatry. It was an attempt to unify his empire under a single religious and political system, consolidating his power as a godlike figure. Nebuchadnezzar's Babylon was more than just a kingdom. It was a symbol of human pride, arrogance and the desire for global domination. It foreshadowed the final attempt at world control prophesied in the book of Revelation, where a global system will rise demanding allegiance and worship, much like Nebuchadnezzar's statue. This foreshadowing points to the reality that the spirit of Babylon is not just a thing of the past. It is an ongoing attempt by the forces of darkness to establish a one-world government that defies God. When we examine history, it becomes apparent that there has been an invisible hand pushing the world toward this one-world system of control. This is not just a series of coincidental events. It is a coordinated effort by spiritual forces to shape the course of human history. Empires have risen and fallen, each with leaders who sought to expand their influence and authority over the entire known world. From Alexander the Great, who wept because there were no more worlds to conquer, to the Roman Empire, which sought to unify the world under its rule, the ambition for a single centralized authority has been a recurring theme. 
In each of these empires, we see the same pattern, a leader or a group of leaders driven by an insatiable desire for power, wealth and control, often at the expense of individual freedoms and national sovereignty. This pursuit of domination has not been limited to military conquest. It has also manifested in political manipulation, economic control and ideological persuasion. Each of these efforts represents the spirit of the Antichrist working behind the scenes, subtly guiding the actions of rulers and nations. In more recent history, we see this desire manifesting in different forms. The rise of colonial empires, totalitarian regimes and even ideological movements all echo this ancient ambition. Whether through military conquest, political manipulation or ideological persuasion, the goal has been the same, to bring the world under one dominion. The 20th century alone witnessed two world wars, both of which were driven by the ambitions of leaders seeking global dominance. The aftermath of these wars saw the formation of international bodies like the League of Nations and later the United Nations, organizations that were intended to promote peace but also have the potential to consolidate global power. The Cold War era was another battleground for ideological control with the world split between two superpowers, each seeking to impose its own vision of global order. In our current era, the concept of globalization has further advanced the agenda of one world control. Through economic interdependence, global trade agreements and multinational corporations, the world is more connected than ever before. However, this interconnectedness also makes it easier for centralized control to be implemented. Policies and decisions made in one part of the world can have immediate and far-reaching effects on the rest of the globe. The drive toward a cashless society, digital identification systems and global health initiatives are all signs of the increasing push toward a unified system that could easily be co-opted for the purposes of control. This invisible hand is not just a metaphor, it is the spirit of the Antichrist at work in the world. The Bible tells us that the spirit of the Antichrist is already present and it seeks to prepare the way for the ultimate manifestation of the Antichrist, a figure who will attempt to rule the world demanding allegiance and worship from all people. In 1 John 4, 3 we read, But every spirit that does not acknowledge Jesus is not from God. This is the spirit of the Antichrist which you have heard is coming and even now is already in the world. Today we are witnessing this push toward one world control like never before. In our generation, technological advancements, global communication and interconnected economies have made the idea of a unified world more feasible than ever. The advent of the internet, social media and artificial intelligence has created a global village where information travels instantly and decisions can be coordinated on a global scale. What was once a slow march towards centralized control has now become a sprint. Moreover, we are seeing an unprecedented push for digital identities, cashless transactions and the centralization of financial systems. Cryptocurrency and blockchain technology, while innovative, also have the potential to be used for tracking and controlling individuals' financial activities. The concept of a universal basic income tied to digital currencies is being discussed as a way to provide economic stability. However, it also opens the door to control over how and where money is spent. Imagine a scenario where your ability to buy or sell could be restricted based on your compliance with certain societal norms or government mandates. This is not far-fetched. It is a direct pathway to the reality described in Revelation 13. We see these trends converging in ways that align with the prophecies of Revelation 13, where a global government will emerge demanding allegiance and worship from all people. Revelation 13 verses 7 to 8 warns us of a beast that will have authority over every tribe, people, language and nation, and that all inhabitants of the earth will worship it. This beast will control buying and selling, 
dictating who can participate in the economy based on their allegiance to the system. These developments are not happening in a vacuum. They are part of a larger spiritual battle that is unfolding before our eyes. The spirit of the Antichrist is working overtime to prepare the way for the ultimate deception and we must be vigilant. As believers, we must recognize the signs of the times and understand that these moves toward one world control are not merely political or economic. They are deeply spiritual. The ancient spirit pushing the world toward one world control is the spirit of the Antichrist. This spirit opposes everything of God seeking to replace God's order with its own counterfeit. The Apostle Paul wrote in 2 Thessalonians 2, 7. For the secret power of lawlessness is already at work, but the one who now holds it back will continue to do so till he is taken out of the way. This power of lawlessness is the driving force behind the moves we see towards global governance and control. The spirit of the Antichrist operates through deception, manipulation and control. It is subtle, often appearing as an angel of light, offering solutions to the world's problems that seem reasonable and beneficial on the surface. However, these solutions come with strings attached, strings that lead to greater control, loss of freedom, and ultimately, allegiance to a system that stands in direct opposition to God. This spirit is not just confined to political or economic realms, it permeates every aspect society. It influences media, entertainment, education, and even religious institutions. We see its fingerprints in the push for moral relativism, where truth is subjective and can be molded to fit the desires of the individual rather than conforming to the absolute truth of God's word. We see it in the erosion of traditional values and the redefinition of family and morality. All of these shifts are part of a broader strategy to undermine the foundations of God's order and replace it with a human-centered, godless system. The Antichrist's agenda is ultimately about worship. It is not enough for him to control economies, governments and societies. He seeks the hearts and minds of people. Revelation 13 tells us that the beast will demand worship from all who dwell on the earth. This is the ultimate act of rebellion against God, humanity worshipping the creation rather than the creator. The Antichrist will present himself as the savior of the world, offering peace, prosperity and security, but it will come at the cost of complete submission to his authority. Nothing just happens by chance. The global events you are witnessing, the decisions being made by world leaders and the shifts in societal norms are not random. They are influenced by spiritual beings, principalities and powers that are orchestrating a grand design to bring the world under a unified, godless system. This is why the Bible tells us in Ephesians 6.12 that our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against rulers, authorities, the powers of this dark world, and the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. We are in the midst of a spiritual battle that is intensifying as we approach the end of the age. The enemy knows that his time is short, and he is pulling out all the stops to deceive, divide, and destroy. This is not a time for complacency. It is a time for spiritual alertness. We must be aware of the enemy's schemes and stand firm in the truth of God's word. As followers of Christ, our response to this reality must be rooted in faith, discernment and vigilance. We are called to be aware of the times we are living in and to understand that the enemy is actively working to establish his kingdom on earth. But we must also remember that our hope is not in this world or its systems. Our hope is in the kingdom of God which is eternal and unshakable. In Matthew 24 verses 4 to 5, Jesus warned his disciples, Watch out that no one deceives you. For many will come in my name claiming I am the Messiah and will deceive many. Deception is one of the key tactics of the spirit of the Antichrist. This is why it is so important for us to be grounded in the truth of God's word, to be led by the Holy Spirit and to have a strong relationship with Jesus Christ. Only then can we stand firm against the schemes of the enemy.
Standing firm in Christ means more than just resisting the external pressures of the world. It means fortifying our inner lives with the truth of God's Word. We must be diligent in our study of Scripture, not just as a religious duty, but as a lifeline to divine wisdom and guidance. The Bible is our sword in spiritual warfare, and we must wield it skillfully against the lies and deceptions of the enemy. In a world where truth is often distorted, God's Word remains the unchanging standard by which we can discern right from wrong. In conclusion, the ancient demon behind one world control is not a new force. It is the same spirit that has been at work since the beginning of time, seeking to unite humanity under a godless authority. From the Tower of Babel to Nebuchadnezzar's Babylon, and throughout history, this spirit has sought to bring the world under its control. Today we are witnessing the acceleration of this agenda as the world moves closer to the fulfillment of Revelation 13. But we must remember that God is still in control. He has a plan and a purpose for His people, and He has given us the tools we need to stand firm in these times. As we see the signs of the times unfolding, let us be vigilant, prayerful, and committed to following Christ. Let us not be swayed by the pressures of the world, but stand firm in the truth knowing that our God is with us and He will never leave us nor forsake us.